Welcome to the Church Facility Expert Series. My name is Tom Rayner. I'm from Church Answers, but even more importantly, I have Todd Brown and Isaac Brown of Brown Church Development Group, the Church Facility Experts, and you can go and find out about them at churchfacilityexpert.com. Gentlemen, we we, uh, have already recorded one episode. It was fantastic. It was about the exterior of the church. And I know that some people say, oh, the exterior of the church, that sounds fascinating. It's really, it's, it's, it's gospel centric stuff. I mean, there are going to be some people who come or don't come because of how the facility looks on the outside. And that's why it is so important. And I've said it again and again, Brown Church Development Group is the premier church building design firm anywhere. They're our partner in ministry. We recommend them and no one else. And uh, we don't just do it because it's a partnership in ministry in a formal sense. We do it because we believe in them. So if you didn't, if you weren't introduced to him the first time, Todd Brown, welcome back to uh, this podcast series. Always great to have you here. It's great to be a part of this, Tom. I'm uh, really enjoying myself. Well, we're, we're, we're enjoying the expertise that we're getting from you too. Isaac Brown, Isaac, you seem like you might be just a year or two younger. So uh, we're, we're, we're glad that uh, then either one of us, by the way, uh, we're glad we're glad that you're here and uh, that you're part of the youth group that is uh, <laughs> that, that is with us today. Hey, guys, the, the, this is true. I go to my son's church, Jess. Y- y'all know Sam better. He's in he's in Bradenton. But Jess is my pastor in the Nashville area in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And uh, uh, median age of the church is about 18 Wow. And I, I'm about, uh, let's see, I'm looking at the date of this. Uh, I'm a few days away from the release of this from turning uh, 69 years old. And um, there's only one other person in the church that is older than me. I mean, that is so, it's, 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 it's really, it's really demoralizing. You know, you walk <laughs> into the church and everybody says yes, sir, to you. And, and you know, they, they want to help me to walk in. I mean, it's just, it is, it is really it is really a young church. I don't know how I got on that, but uh, um, I, 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 we we talk about churches a lot, and this time this is going to be one of the most important ones that we have. Not that the others are unimportant, but we're going to be talking about the whole issue of safety. So, Todd Isaac, welcome you as well. Glad to have you uh, for this particular episode. Uh, the title of it is: Is your church facility really safe? I put some points here, but guys, you take this anywhere that you want to go because this is one of the most important issues. Sam has a book coming out in 2025. Uh, No, 2020. I think it may be this year, 2024. Anyway, it's coming out from Tyndale called Make My Church Safe. And uh, it has a lot to do with safety from a predator point of view, from, from a shooter point of view, but also from a facility point of view as well. Not as much in that part, but... If we're not we're, if we're not thinking about safety, we're not thinking. And I just I just want y'all to really hone into this and tell us what you're seeing on the issues of safety. I've pointed out four things, but it could be a lot more than these four. So please feel free to expand. Uh, I, I asked Isaac a question in the previous one that we recorded. He said, "Tom, you know that that one the best." No, he didn't say one the best question in the world. That'd be rude. <laughs> but but he said, "No, that's not really right." So I want to make sure that. You, if I need correcting, which I often do, please correct me. We don't we don't edit it. We, we will if you want us to, but we usually don't edit it. But we just go with whatever we do. So I want y'all are the experts. Churchfacilityexpert.com. Y'all are the experts. There's no better church building design master plan. And Todd, I just want to pause for a minute. In the last episode, you said it's really more of a strategy plan that you do for churches and you're doing more of these virtually. So would you just, uh, this is a new episode. So give a, just give a few more uh, tidbits about that, even if it's repetitive from the last episode. Yeah, I think all this, I mean, even what we're going to talk about with safety is uh, it's really a strategy first, Uh, discover before you design. Mm. And so we, we believe that there needs to be a good uh, strategic plan in place for your facility. And part of that plan is going to be safety. Part of it is going to be expanding. And we had a, uh, 
uh, the, the last uh, time we, we did this, I think we talked about master planning with you, Tom, and it, it was a three-part series that was, that was really good in that podcast. But, um, you know, even when we talk about safety and we talk about, you know, some things that are, make us all uncomfortable to talk about, and we talk about shooters in our church. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, when I think of safety, there's a lot of things that, that we'll talk about today. But number one, you know, is do you have a security team? And then we can make a facility uh, a safer environment for the people uh, just by how it's designed and the strategies that we use of sight lines and a whole bunch of different things. Uh, you know, we can minimize the facility exterior doors. That's one of the things that, that the older churches, it was before, you know, there was this, this uh, worry of someone coming in and breaking in and doing bad things. Uh, we had a lot of doors and now we got to control the doors. So uh, the security team, um, both Isaac and I are, uh, um, we're owners of a, of a guide service and we, and we shoot, uh, we, you know, we shoot guns all the time as part of a part of that guide service. Um, and so we're really into security. We're really into, uh, um, understanding weapons and, um, and then the facility. So, uh, all of that has to be part of an overall comprehensive design when you maximize, uh, you know, the safety factor in a church locking doors having uh, certain doors if you're if you've inherited a building that's uh, got a gazillion doors some of them have to be locked only you can only get out of them and then you just have to have a team that goes around and make sure all the doors are locked i'd i'd also say that posting uh, staff at at the entrances um you you know for most buildings you're going to you want to keep any bad things out so uh, outside um so i you know the first thing we would talk about would probably be just your overall comprehensive safety plan of the facility, making sure that you can have people in uh, certain strategic positions and know where they are mm-hmm. to see multiple places. And I think the other the other major safety uh, is with the children, and uh, that's kind of Isaac's uh, expertise. So I'll let him talk about maybe some of the children's check in and children's safety. All right, so. I want to make sure that we're adding. Uh, we've we've already, we've got some points here, but I want to make sure that we're having adding overall strategic safety concerns is one of the major points that, that we have in here because that that was goal what you just said, Todd. I was mentally writing this down. I wasn't I wasn't writing it down, but I was mentally writing it down. So, uh, in addition to the points that I've had here, I want to talk about overall safety strategy, and uh, let's just let's go right to. The, the children's uh, safety strategy related to facilities and other issues. By the, by the way, just just to give you a point of reference, I got a I got a telephone call, and I'm trying to look up the exact date, but I think it was March of 2009. Um, anyway, uh, it was it was a Sunday afternoon, and I got in a call that one of my students had been shot in the pulpit. And when I say one of my students, he was a um, doctoral student. He was pastoring a large church at the time. His name was Fred Winters. And that that was my first such a direct experience, you know, back in 2009. I actually went to the church and preached uh, because of his absence. And um, I, I, the, his was not the first, that was for sure. There were others before 2009, but it was one of the ones that really raised an, an awareness when Fred was killed in the pulpit. And it was just a random guy that came in that nobody saw him come in. Nobody questioned him. Nobody... Uh, I think someone tried to stop him as they saw him approaching uh, the pulpit, but they didn't see the gun. So uh, this is this is really, you know, touching to my heart here and um, got to know his his uh, widow, Cindy, and their their two girls. And uh, it's just tragic story, but but it happens. But safety of the children, Isaac, that's just that's that's one of the big issues. And we're going to put this down as one of our. Uh, one of our major points. So talk to us about what we need to know about safety about the children. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, this, this is a situation um, that unfortunately uh, comes up where um, 
there are a lot of churches that just do not have safe facilities for, for their kids, and they don't have safe best practices uh, for their just ministries in general. Um, you know, as a young parent uh, myself, I, I've got a two-year-old daughter, and, and you know, when we come into, into a church, we want to make sure that our, our child is safe. And if there are any red flags there, you can pretty much assume that we're, we're going to either keep our daughter with us or we might not be coming back to that church, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I've been to a lot, a lot of churches. Now, if I was a, a, a young couple, young parent that came into a church for the first time and they expected me to leave my child in another building even um, that I had never been to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly like that. We see this all the time where sometimes children's ministry is in a completely separate building. Mm -hmm. um, just by rule of thumb, one of the things that we make sure that we um, design within master plans is how can we get the, the most vulnerable kids um, in a secured children's area? And then how can we have the youngest kids closest to mom? So closer to the sanctuary, where they're going to be. That is kind of an order of operations or an adjacency issue that we see a lot of times. And then um, there are some best practices, like having a secure check-in area where you actually check in your kids and use a software um, that prints off the little name tags and all that kind of thing. Um, I find that, you know, when we're consulting with churches, the, the smaller the church, um, you know, these are often the, the churches that feel like they don't have a, a need for this because they say, well, we know everybody. You know, we don't live in a big town. We don't know everybody. We don't need to have um, all this stuff. We just open up the door and our kids run in and then they run to the sanctuary. And that's that's fine. Um, it's not best practices, but it's fine when you're a church of, you know, 40, 50 people or so. But as you start growing, you start running into a lot of other issues. Um, you know, you have to know just because a kid has, has a parent there doesn't mean the kid's allowed to go with that parent. Mm -hmm. You sure. see this all the time with churches where little Johnny gets checked into, into uh, Sunday school and Johnny's dad comes to pick him up and the kid says, Daddy. And so the volunteers give him to the dad. But what they didn't know is that dad was not authorized to, to pick up that kid. Hey, Isaac, I got I'm going to interrupt you because, uh, and please don't lose your train of thought. Remember safety of the kid that you shouldn't be checking out all that stuff. So this past Sunday from the recording of this, um, my daughter-in-law is the pastor's wife, of course, and she gets stopped and, and, and quite often she's late picking up her kids, my grandkids, especially the two younger ones. And so it's not unusual for one of the, workers to bring the kids to her with the proper checkout credentials. Well, they saw me and they recognized I was their granddad and they yelled at me and they wanted to go to me. I'll tell you what, the nursery worker said, sorry, Tom, they cannot, you're not authorized to check them out. They knew mm -hmm. I was a grandparent. They knew that I was a member of the church, but they also knew that only Rachel and Jess, the parents had authorized to check out. And you know what? I wasn't the least bit offended. They were protecting my grandchildren. I don't know. I'm telling you what, you protect my grandchildren. You got my heart. So mm -hmm. I got 11 grandkids and you mess with any of them. I'll mess with you, but you protect them and I'll love you forever. So Absolutely. I'm sorry I inter interrupted you, but that's just a good story about someone yeah. who knew what they were doing. And by the way, if you're listening to this podcast, thank you, Misty, for being so commendable with the kids. Back to you, Isaac. Absolutely. So that's just one example, making sure that you, you're taking advantage of the technology side of things, making sure you're doing background checks on the, and training uh, for your children's volunteers. Um, one of the facility things that we see um, a lot of times is, um, you know, if you have a, a restroom in the children's area, make sure that that restroom is, is for children and that we, at least at my church, any volunteers um, that are volunteering in the children's have to leave the secured area and use the quote unquote, the public restroom in the, in the main lobby. Um, also we have, we have cameras on in all of the um, classrooms and it's a, 
you know, two teachers in the classrooms at all times, those kind of things. Um, but in general, um, communicating and over communicating the culture of safety, that your kids are going to be safe here, that we value your kids. We okay. value families in our church. Um, all those little things um, really speak a lot to parents. And God forbid you have uh, one bad thing happen um, in, in the church that that could completely shut you down and ruin your witness to that entire community. So it is just not worth it. It is a priority number one. Protect the kids. Well, I think I know why you wanted Isaac to talk about the kids, because not only does he know a lot about it, but I think he's pretty passionate about it, too. I'm, I want to go to two different areas. Uh, I want to talk about accessibility, and then I want to group some of these others, like asbestos, lead paint, mold growth. Uh, maybe fire safety will talk about that as well. Uh, Todd, just just talk to us about accessibility issues, because I'm in a lot of churches that don't seem like they have accessible entrances and other places to talk to me. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the, uh, the way churches were built, uh, 50 years ago, it seemed like they, they liked the split level church. You had five steps up to the main level and then five steps down to the basement, um, kind of a garden basement thing. So, you know, the best practice, is to and what we what we do when we look at churches or design a new one brand new one for accessibility we want to have the worship uh level at the ground level so mm -hmm. so that i can go right from the parking lot maybe a little bit of grade but i can walk right in and i can i can be able to worship and then i usually from there i i i try to have you know, kind of a hub of ministry, but I, I, I got a lot of things that are handicap accessible and elevators. So, you know, when we start talking about um, flow, uh, parking lots, um, accessibility, in our mind, we're saying the main level that the worship uh, is on is, is going to be the easy one for, you know, anyone that has any kind of uh, handicap uh, accessibility issues. Um, and we want to start that again at the edge of parking lot, you yeah. know, come, come right on, right on in. And then, and then a lot of times churches are talking about elevators and you, you've got to, you know, again, the, the word strategy comes to mind. You have to put the elevator in the right strategic place. So discover before you design, don't just say we need an elevator, put it there. Think about a master plan and where strategically that elevator from that main parking lot level is going to do the most good, help the most people. And so to really keep that safe, uh, that, that that's what you got to do. I mean, I, I was just at a church uh, the other day that had um, some parking right up. It was by by the church, but it was on a slope. And uh, you know, where I live uh, in, in the winter, it gets slick. And so the dug on car might slide down the hill. I mean, right. you know, there's there's uh, issues with uh, with parking on the, on this particular uh, project. So, you know, safety is going to start in your parking lot. We had, we had talked in an earlier session about you know how the uh, the parking lot and the sideway and the flow uh, sidewalks and the flow needs to work. We like to have the people flow so that. Uh, people are, are able to nose in park. And then we like to have a sidewalk that's going to take them right to the front door or close to the front door so that you can get people from walking behind the cars. Um, I got it. So there's some good, there's some good safety tips uh, in that. And if you don't have something like that, uh, put somebody in the parking lot, help people. Help there we go back to the parking lot graders and how yeah. important they are. Yeah. Uh, there, there's several other things we could cover, and I'm just going to throw them out there. And you, you gentlemen, tell me. Let's talk. We got a couple more minutes left. Let's talk about this one, or you add one that we haven't talked about. I had asbestos and lead, mole, fire safety systems. Any, in all of your conversations, which of these items? We'll keep them in the show notes, uh, just so our folks can see them. But which of these items are, or any others, do we need to address in safety concerns? And either one of you. 
Um, I, I would say the, the, the mold, and we'll, we'll talk about this in the, in the next uh, podcast, uh, mold is, is going to come from water. Um, so, you know, mold can be a concern. There's ways to test for it, um, but you got to get to the root cause. We'll, we'll talk about that, um, about the, the things that, that can go wrong with your facility and how to snuff out and to find the, the water. But mold, yes, definitely. If you have any kind of basement, um, any kind of a water retention or water getting into the building, uh, there's tests that you can do for mold. I had a building, no, no, no kidding, in Texas that uh, it was a separate building. It was an educational building, and the mold was so bad in there that they wanted to do a remodel, but they wouldn't let me go in to the building. Wow. And so they had a test done, and they said, whoa, you know, you don't go in without some breathing apparatus. So I wasn't even able to go in. So mold can be an issue in certain climates. Um, so, so I, I would say mold, yes, got to fix the water, uh, and those kind of things, asbestos and lead paints, uh, probably not a big issue if you're not doing any kind of a remodel work, okay. if you're not going to mess with it, asbestos isn't a bad thing unless you start tearing some stuff out and you get the particles flying around in the air. So, uh, asbestos uh, you know, there's certain age groups. If you're going to do any kind of remodeling, don't just send a group, a group of guys in there. Give us a call um, and uh, do some. You can hire a company to come in and they'll check and they'll see if it's safe to tear that wall out or tear that tile up that may have asbestos in it. But asbestos and paint are usually not a problem unless you're remodeling. Um, life safety in terms of uh, sprinkler systems and those kind of things, uh, usually they're regulated by the state fire marshal to stay in compliance. So I would just refer you to, to, to someone like that. Um, again, this would become an issue if you're remodeling. So, you know, if you have an older facility, I, I would say um, don't just move walls without talking to somebody because they, you know, in in the industry we 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 say they could be hot, meaning they have asbestos. So okay. that, that would be a safety thing that you'd want to, you'd want to check before you do anything, but just normal day-to-day -day use, not a problem. And if you have questions about any of these things we are referring to in these podcasts, they are the church facility experts. You can go to church facility experts, singular.com and write them. You can give them a call at Brown church development group or go to the URL there, but just remember they're the church facility expert. Here's what we know about the folks at Brown. They will help you even if they're not the ones who are going to help you. They'll point you in the right direction. We found that out again and again, but if they do help you, you're going to get one of the best. So gentlemen, we've done two of these podcasts and they're absolute gold. You know, we, 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 we've talked about the exterior and how important that is. We've talked about safety issues. You've brought up some great points. Uh, children's ministry and other things that uh, we just need to know about. And we're going to go in the next one. We're going to talk about when things really go badly. And my guess is y'all seen a few of those as well and what can go badly. So we'll talk about those. Thank you to Isaac Brown, to Todd Brown, the Brown Church Development Group. Once again, you can go to churchfacilityexpert.com. That's churchfacilityexpert.com. Or you can click on the URL for Brown Church Development Group, or you can give them a call, whatever you want to do. They're there to receive you, to work with you. They're the best. We, we asked them to partner with us many years ago, and it's been a decision that our team has delighted in. Thank you for being a part of the Rainer Own Leadership Special Series called the Church Facility Expert Series with Todd Brown and Isaac Brown of Brown Church Development Group. And uh, if you haven't listened to all three, we got a third one that you need to listen to. And it will be coming up just as soon as you get done with this one. It will be ready for you. So thank you on YouTube for viewing us. Give us, a, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. And thank you for listening to us on your favorite podcasting app. Give us a rating and review there. We're always grateful to Brown Church Development Group. We're always grateful to Isaac Brown and Todd Brown for their leadership. And we're going to continue to hear from them in the years to come. See you later.